The regulatory requirements for closed system contamination have been increasing. What do you think is spurring this push? There are three reasons for the increased demand on containment. First, many of the novel biopharmaceutical products are cancer treatments, like antibody drug conjugates or other highly potent combined products. Second, the 2014 EMA guideline sets health exposure limits that require a permitted daily exposure PDE limit for each product. These PDEs define cleaning and cross-contamination limits. The third reason concerns non-product contact surfaces. I covered this in my November 2017 article for the PDA letter, Isolator Surfaces and Contamination Risk to Personnel and Patient. This article explains the cleaning limits for non-product contact surfaces. Previously, this information was not available as far as comparison to the toxicity of the product. In the PDA letter, we published a table of cleaning limits for GMP and occupational safety for non-product contact surfaces in isolators or clean rooms. This table, along with the article, has gained considerable interest and acceptance within the industry. How do controls for cross-contamination and external contamination, such as microbial contamination, differ? In general, the requirements are similar, but require different method. For microbiological contamination, you validate a 6 lox spore reduction with vaporized hydrogen peroxide based on the suitable biological indicators. For the prevention of cross-contamination, the reduction of the high-potent toxic substance is based on the PDE limits. If we look at the design of an aseptic fill and finish operation, more than 95% of all surfaces are non- or indirect product contact surfaces. Yet these are critical in some situations, for example, if an open container like a vial must be filled or lyophilized. In this instance, there is a high potential risk of cross-contamination to the open vial from the previous produced product, as the limits are often 10,000 times below what we can visibly see. The EMA released a recent guideline on setting health-based exposure limits. Do you expect the FDA to follow suit? I certainly expect so. FDA and EMA work closely together as members of PICS. We have seen this in the regards of the draft Annex 1 revision. Considering that in 2018 PICS adopted the EMA guideline on setting health exposure limits in shared facilities as a guidance document, I would tell my US colleagues to stay tuned.